Hey guys, good afternoon. How you doing? It's Steve. Welcome to the Little Little Wood Shop and our Sunday evening vlog. What do we have for you guys real quick? Alright, this week for you, we have Valentine's Day CNC router project, okay? We decided to give you guys this a few weeks in advance. This is going to be a quick little project. It's going to be a nice little keepsake for your significant other. We're going to render a nice little heart-shaped jewelry box. We're going to use minimal uh, tooling. I'm going to do this out of scrap. I'm going to ultimately here, I'm going to be using uh, something I've been waiting to dry for a while. This is some nice spalted flowering, uh, flowering crab apple. My, my parents had a big, big heirloom flowering crab on their lawn. It got hit with an ice storm a few years ago. Got total, I got the trunk. Well, these are some of the leftover scrap pieces. This is what we're going to make my wife's uh, little keepsake ring heart box for Valentine's Day out of. And we're going to do our lid out of a beautiful piece of dark mahogany. I think the dark on the light is going to look really nice. And then we're going to seal everything with uh, a tongue oil hand rubbed finish. High gloss. Uh, this is, yeah, we know. Uh, this is Formby's Furniture Workshop, okay? This stuff is readily available in most hardware stores. I had some kicking around. I normally use uh, a different product, but this is what we have in the cupboard, and I've used it before, so that's what we're going to use again. Now, the blog itself goes deeper into detail between the history and the origin of Valentine's Day, the holiday itself. What I can tell you about Valentine's Day, and I didn't realize how much revenue it produced, holy smokes. The average person spends, in the research that I did, between $100 and $126 per person for their significant other. And in 2014, the revenue for Valentine's Day was over $13 billion. That's pretty significant. I mean, we know that the forerunner is Christmas, but hey, for Valentine's Day, that's, uh, that's a lot of revenue. All right? We go deeper into the blog, like I said, please feel free to go in and check it out. Okay, we're going to show you, uh, and I believe that we also showed you in the VCAR Pro tutorial. If you want, you can go in and you can personalize this. You can personalize the lids with a, with a nice saying, you know, forever yours, love you. However you guys decide to personalize that for your, uh, for your significant other, it's entirely up to you. I had mentioned uh, a possible beveled edge around the lid. I'm not going to go with that. What we are going to do though is I am going to flock the inside of the box. We mentioned that in the article, flockling, uh, flockling, excuse me, flocking is nothing more than a crushed velvet which is uh, applied through a, a flocking gun. Which we'll get to that and we'll get to the finishing. This is going to be a really quick turn, really simple project though everyone, alright? So you stay tuned. We're going to take, I'm going to get the, uh, I'm going to get my block locked in. I told you I don't use clamps. That's just how I roll. I end up using stops up here to create like a makeshift fence on my uh, my spoil board on the top of my table. I screw these in and I always have the ability to lock my material in and then my stops hold it firmly in place. If I feel anything's going to come loose, I'll tag a couple screws into areas where I know my mills aren't going to hit. Again, I don't like clamps, okay? You guys stay tuned. We'll get you some close-ups of this thing milling out and uh, of the project itself running, okay? And then we'll carry into the sanding and the finishing then. All right, you guys stay tuned. We got more to come. All right, guys. We're going to take and we're going to secure our material down to the table. I told you I just use these little stops. These are just pieces of ripped off uh, composite that were left over from some home improvement. And again, we only use fasteners that are going to go into our stops and into the spoiler board we put over the factory. I don't want to pile the, uh, the factory installed spoiler board full of holes. The other thing that we're going to do, I'm going to find the center of my material. Great. We've got the laser crosshair turned on on our machine. And 
then X marks the spot. We go to our wing CNC controller. We click on our laser X0, Y0. And by God, now our end mill or the center of our collet is lined up directly in the center of our material. From there, I'm going to do a bit change. I'm going to put in my half inch end mill. I'm going to touch top. I'm going to do my pocket. We're going to do a change, a bit change. We're going to put in a quarter inch end mill. And then from there, we're going to do the cutout. We'll put the lid in, and then we'll cut the lid out. Well, we have a two tool path punction on the lid, but we'll get to that in just a minute. All right, you guys stay tuned. We got more to come. All right, everybody, welcome back. Same thing's going to apply again. We've got our lid in now. I've got it blocked. Everything's locked in nice and tight. I have a quarter inch end mill installed from the cutout on our box. First thing we're going to do is we're going to do that pocketing tool path, which will only take out an eighth of an inch, and then it will allow the lid to sit down inside of our box just that one eighth of an inch. So we're going to fire her up, we're going to mill this, and then we're going to cut it out, okay? You guys stay tuned. We've got more to cut. And now we are all set to cut out our part. Let's get these popped out of their blanks, see what we're looking at. All right, everybody. Well, we've now got our base. Here's our little decorative heart, a nice big pocket we put in with our half inch. This, uh, this pocket, actually, we kissed the side of a crack. We'll give you guys some close-ups later uh, once we have this sanded. Sometimes, to cut these out, I don't go all the way through and uh, I'm not going to draw it back in the machine to redo the cutout 
I take this Milwaukee. I saw a plumber using one of these one day. It really caught my eye, and I like it. It just takes a uh, takes a normal sawzall blade. It really is a nice tool. I use these up here all the time for cutting stuff out. Now, what we're going to do? And there we are. There's our beautiful little heart-shaped box. It's got some spalting in it. Like I said, it's got a nice crack. This is really going to make, make a nice little gift for the missus. And then I lit it. Same thing again. And there we have it. Now, we've got our lid, we've got our box, and we've got some sanding to do, obviously. Because this lid... The lid right now is a little too snug, so we've got a little bit of sanding. But that's basically our piece, so we're going to go work this right now on the orbital. And uh, when we get ready, we'll come back. And I told you we're just going to use Formby's Rub-On Oil for a nice hand-rubbed finish. And we'll knock, down the, uh, we'll knock down our tabs and any overhang. But that's it. One quaint little Valentine's Day box for your uh, significant other, okay? Guys, stay tuned. We'll get to the finishing end of this. Simple, simple. And uh, that'll be the end. All right, guys. We'll be right back. All right, folks. We're back. This is it. We've got our box run. Here we are. We've got our beautiful bottom. And we've got our nice mahogany top. Nothing, uh, nothing difficult here at all. I will apologize in advance, though. Uh, when I programmed my lid... I told you that uh, I basically used the imprint of the, uh, the program from the box itself. The actual heart was out of symmetry just a little bit. So what had happened was by milling it, taking the mirror image of the box to do the lid for this little, uh, this little 1 8 inch rim so that the lid fits in, well by the time I folded it back over, I've now basically thrown this thing symmetrically uh, out of whack a little bit because, like I said, the box walls here, one side I think has got a wall thickness a little thicker than the other. So I had to rework my lid a little bit. Now I'm going to go back in, I'm going to alter the program. What I'm going to do is I'll take the same image that I used, I'm going to mirror it, I'm going to pre flip it so that once it mills out, when it goes to go on the box, now it's going to be uh, symmetrically. Correct. All right. The other thing that we're going to do, we told you, we're going to end up using Formby's tongue oil finish. This is what I happen to have in the cupboard, so this is what we're going to use for this little box. This goes on with something as simple as a rag. There is nothing to this, guys. You'll find an area, you know, that you, uh, you want to cover. It'll apply a little bit to a cloth. All right, and then we can apply it to a side. And yes, sir, that is going to give some really nice highlights and colors to this piece. I told you that this uh, this little box for my wife here, this uh, had a nice crack in the back of it. I think it's going to really add some nice effects. But Formies to me, or any of the rub-ons, are they're about as easy as a finish as they get, for God's sakes. All you got to do is put them on a rag and work them in, all right? Follow the instructions on the, uh, the recommend, uh, recommendations on the back of the label. And that's pretty much it. Now, the other thing I had mentioned was flocking. What is flocking? Okay, flocking is nothing more than crushed felt that you put on through the use of a flocking gun. It's just a tube, has a ring on the top, this one has five holes in it. You'll essentially put your crushed felt or your flocking in here, very gently put your lid on, and you give it a couple pushes, and it throws the flocking out the end of the gun. Now to do this, you want to match whatever color flocking you choose to use inside your box, you also want to use the colored paint to coordinate. Green flock, use a green paint. 
blue flocking, use a blue paint, so on and so forth. You get the idea. As far as the paint goes, they're going to try to sell you special flocking paint. Guess what? This is a uh, can of Ace brand Rust-Oleum oil-based enamel. It's red. It may not be 100%. It's going to be a wash in the end, though. Now, in this case, I had mentioned I'm going to do the interior of this box. All I'm going to do is the very bottom of it, though. So we'll sit here. Don't be afraid to put this on heavy. And I'm only going to do the bottom of the box. So take your time cutting your edges. And then what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll load up the flocking gun and we'll shoot some flocking in there real quick. Alright guys, we've got the interior of the box fully point, painted red. Like I said, match, match your colored paint up to whatever colored flock you want. The flocking guns, you can buy these on Amazon. They're less than 10 bucks. If any of you are thinking about getting into dueling jewelry boxes, uh, felt was really big back in my day. You saw a lot of 8-track uh, tape cases. And I know any of you right now under the age of 25 is going, what the hell is an 8-track tape? Anyways, yeah, I'm from that era. But it is, it's a simple process and it definitely adds, you know, some unique character to, to any piece that you do. Whether it's a jewelry box, keepsake box, you know, a little something like that. When you're going to put your lid on, do not take and just slam this down because you'll shoot this big cloud of felt out. All right. Let me move. Uh, let me move some things out of the way because this will make a mess. By the way, so wherever you're doing it, make sure you don't mind getting a ton of crap everywhere. So, all right, we'll lay it down. We'll stand it up. I'm gonna draw it back. I'll give it a couple, couple good shots. Of. Now, hopefully, you can see the flocking coming out. It's a big cloud. Also, although I don't have it on, I would probably recommend you wear some type of dust mask or protection. Now, this is definitely a big deal for the little ones. I can tell you that the kids enjoy doing this. All right, you can take any of the loose stuff, you can sprinkle it back in, shake it around. Seriously, it's not rocket science, it's flocking. All right. If you can, I would say try to save any excess. Stuff costs you money. You can dump any excess back in the bag. And there we have it. There's the interior of our box. It's now all flocked. We'll end up putting the formies on this once that dries. And that's pretty much it. There we have it. We have a nice little decorative box for Valentine's Day for the missus with a felted bottom. Easy peasy guys, simple simple, okay? I uh, will go back in, we will fix the lid uh, in the program for you, and then we'll release the package. Alright everybody, I want to say thank you as always for following us, for subscribing to us. I appreciate all your support, you're keeping me alive up here doing what I love and what I enjoy, okay? Well, guys go out, happy, uh, happy Valentine's Day project building, and uh, I can, I can assure you that the missus will really like this gift, okay? All right, guys. We'll see you, uh, we'll see you Wednesday for the midweek shout-out. Until then, be safe, drive safe, and get home safe to you and yours. And uh, huh? have, a, have a good week, and uh, we'll see you shortly. All right, guys. Bye-bye.